The Marvel Cinematic Universe, or the MCU, is one of the biggest movie franchises in history, and over the course of 2021 and 22, at the D323 Expo, Kevin Feige recently announced upcoming projects for Phases 5 and 6, and one of those projects is the second season of one of the MCU's TV shows, What If? Keep watching to find out more about the second season of this hit show, which actors were part of the series. The MCU's TV show, What If? is an animated series, unlike the rest of their series featured on Disney+, and this animated series offers alternate realities of what would have happened if certain MCU films and stories turned out differently. Since this series is animated, it needed voice actors, and although some weren't able to return to voice their animated characters, many of the original MCU actors did for the series. Along with introducing Jeffrey Wright as The Watcher, Samuel L. Jackson returned to voice his character Nick Fury, Mark Ruffalo returned to voice his character from the original Six Avengers, Bruce Banner, The Hulk, Natalie Portman, who returned to voice Jane Foster, Benedict Cumberbatch, who returned as his character Dr. Stephen Strange, Haley Atwell, who returned not as Peggy Carter, but the new Captain America. America, and Steve Rogers, who didn't become Captain America. Furthermore, Chris Hemsworth returned to voice his character Thor, who was also part of the OG6, along with Tom Hiddleston, who voiced his brother Loki. More from the cast included Michael B. Jordan voicing Killmonger, Jeremy Renner voicing Clint Barton or Hawkeye, Karen Gillian voicing Nebula, Sebastian Stan reprising his role and voicing James Bucky Barnes, and Paul Rudd voicing Scott Lang or Ant-Man. And a beloved member of the MCU had voiced his character, and that was Chadwick Boseman voicing Black Panther. It was one of his final roles in the acting world before he passed away in late 2020 from cancer. Who might be returning? At the D23 Expo, while it hasn't been shown to the public yet, Kevin Feige awarded attendees of the conference with the trailer of What If Season 2. According to Therese Laxon from Collider, she reported the trailer featured a number of familiar characters that had previously been shown in the MCU, including Captain Carter and an older version of Bucky Barnes, who is now actually the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. Other familiar characters who were in the trailer were Hela, who is Thor and Loki's sister, T'Challa, the Red Guardian, who is Natasha Romanoff, and Yelena Belova's adoptive father, and Thanos and two sequences in the trailer were shown to be set on Sakaar, one featuring Tony Stark in the Hulkbuster suit that was in Avengers Endgame, alongside Valkyrie and Kor, characters who had first been introduced in Thor Ragnarok and just made their most recent appearance in Thor Love and Thunder. And this trailer features those two characters racing a speeder with the Grandmaster. A shot from the opening episode of Season 2 was also shown in the trailer, and this part showed a town consisting of robots that were concealing something even bigger than themselves. And for Marvel fans who have not only watched the movies but have read the comics, the trailer also featured shots from Marvel 1602, the limited series comic that's run by author Neil Gaiman, and that comic shows Marvel superheroes and villains reimagined in the year 1602. It's noticeable to fans that Chris Evans didn't voice Steve Rogers in the animated series, nor did Scarlett Johansson, who would have voiced her character Natasha Romanoff, or Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. However, one of these actors has been rumored to be returning to the series, and it's none other than Iron Man himself, RDJ. While it hasn't been confirmed yet, rumors have been swirling of the actor joining the What If cast to voice his own character for Season 2, rather than the replacement voice actor, Mick Wingert. What will the episodes consist of? Fans don't know the flat-out plot lines yet for the episodes, and only know those details shared from online outlets and witnesses who were at the D23 Expo. However, the show's head writer, A.C. Bradley, spoke more about what fans can expect and possible returning characters. Going into the second season, we're sticking with anthology form, and it's going to be all new stories, lots of fun new heroes, and pulling more from Phase 4 than we were obviously able to this season. He also shared his enthusiasm about the upcoming series, adding that, hopefully, we'll see hints of Eternals and Shang-Chi and the Black Widow characters. The fun of What If is that we get to explore the entire infinite multiverse, so we try and bounce around as much as we can. I want to play with all these characters, and as much as I love Captain Carter, we've got to share the love. I'm very excited to show new worlds, new heroes. As for the show's length and quantity of episodes for this season, we do know the approximate runtime of each episode, per executive producer Brad Winderbaum, who said they targeted a half hour for each episode. Some of them come in a little longer, and some of them come in a little shorter, and really, it was all about producible time. He also added that we wanted to tell as many stories as we could, and we had a certain budget we had to work with, so it felt like that 10-episode, now 9-episode run was the right quantity. Fans are very excited about the upcoming season of What If, and are hopeful for their favorite characters and a possibly beloved original OG6 actor to return for the series. She-Hulk Wedding Recap The current MCU show airing right now on Disney Plus is She-Hulk, featuring a lawyer other than Matt Murdock, Jennifer Walters, and Marvel's latest episode of She-Hulk is interesting to say the least, and this episode of She-Hulk Hulk featured the sounds of wedding bells. Well, not Jennifer's, as it's been previously shown, she hasn't had much success with romance yet. So in this episode, she's been put on bridesmaid duty for one of her childhood friends named Lulu, who's played by Patty Harrison. Jen was actually looking forward to attending the wedding in her alter form as She-Hulk. She would be seeing people she knew from high school and was expecting to impress them as her hero self. However, her friend Lulu immediately threw that idea out the window and had demanded that Jen not overshadow her big day by being all hulky. Lulu continues to be rude throughout the episode, and 
ignores the professional accomplishments Jen has achieved over the years, and then and then consoles her in a performative way for not having a boy in her life, when in actuality, Jen doesn't really care. Then, the real drama starts when Titania, Jen's arch enemy from previous episodes and the apparent villain of the series, arrives, and Jen is reasonably convinced that she's there to mess with her. However, Titania keeps telling her that she's the date of a guest. Lulu once again berates Jen and calls her crazy for thinking everything is about her. Later on in the episode before another bridesmaid, whose name is Heather, asks Jen to iron the groomsman's shirts. You can hear her say to the girls that ironing is such a Jen job and that she puts chores like this onto Jen all the time. As mentioned before, Jen is single and it's no surprise when a handsome stranger approaches her when she goes to get some air from all of the stress of the wedding at the rehearsal dinner. Am I wrong to be a little suspicious of Josh? He's nice and cute and complimentary. During the reception, Jen loosens up a bit and hilariously dances to Annie Lennox's Walking on Broken Glass. Then, like at every wedding rehearsal dinner, she gets drunk at the cash bar. She drunk calls her cousin Bruce Banner, the Hulk, whom she hasn't heard from for a long time, and fans haven't seen him since the beginning of the season. Then she chats up Josh a little more, and after getting sick in the flower beds, Titania attacks her. Jen forgot how to turn green when she is put in a position where she needs to defend herself as she's too drunk during the episode to be thinking logically. But then, after she manages to transform, the pair hilariously take their fight to the dance floor, where DJ Inchettable Hulk ironically plays the electric slide. The fight ends when Titania slips on ice cubes and breaks her veneers and runs away only for the sake to avoid being photographed. We did get a brief explanation as to why Titania hates She-Hulk so much. She doesn't think Jen has rightfully earned her position to be called a hero so quickly. The episode also deals with some legal matters Jen had to face, coincidentally having to do with non-conventional marriages and divorces. At the end of the episode, while Jen and Josh sober up by sharing some classic fries, the camera zooms out to see that the two are being watched by scientists. Not only do they have surveillance footage of Jen at the wedding, proving that Titania's appearance wasn't the only coincidence, but there's a plethora of science-looking charts and graphs, along with a message from hashtag Hulking, asking if the next phase is ready to go. And one of the scientists takes the needle that the wrecking crew had broken on She-Hulk's skin in a previous episode and replaces it with a new one. There are only three episodes of the series left, so only time will tell of who else Jen has to face off with. Thanks for watching. That's all for today.